Okay guys, so I'm putting some, that was Epsoma um, plant tone I put in, but I'm also putting some alfalfa meal, excuse me, feather meal. And this is for, um, this is for, this is primarily, it's entirely nitrogen. And it's for um, crops that are heavy feeders, such as like corn and tomatoes, because they need like a high nitrogen content. So since this is gonna be the tomato bed, I'm gonna put some of this in here. I'll put a little in in the pack I have done now, and then once, once I fill, finish filling it, I'm gonna put a little bit more. I'm going to scratch it in. Okay guys, so I finished filling it, so now I'm going to add the twine just so you have my squares for the uh, square foot gardening plan. And, oh actually, you know what, let me add the fertilizer, let me add the fertilizer before I forget. Uh, so this, since this is going on the top, um, I'm going to add a combination of, of alfalfa, excuse me, feather meal and corn gluten so I keep the weeds down. So I'm gonna put like half the amount of the feather mill.
Okay, now I'm gonna go get the twine and start measuring. And so these are the biggest tomatoes I have, so I'm gonna plant these now. I have some more inside, but they're a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna give them another few days because we're supposed to get another cool night. It's not supposed to freeze or anything, but I'm gonna give um, the other ones I have inside about a week. And quite frankly, I am going to need another bed. I think I'm gonna need another tomato bed. Um, yeah, I did not. I mean, I'm gonna. I have four more beds to put down that way. Uh, yeah, so I may be starting on that potager garden on the other side of the house a little bit more quickly than I thought. Uh, but this is this is what I've got thus far. Um, these are a mixture of ones that I purchased for myself as well as ones that were given to me by my coworker. Um, so what I've got that's going in the ground today are number one big beef. Um, then it's called homestead. And then this one back here is called uh, 4th of July, which is 2 4th of July. Uh, that one right there in the Bonnie container is Black Crim. And this one right here is called Mountain Fresh, I guess. And then I got an arrogant tomato. This one I purchased. Oh, it's Black Crim. And that one over there, I believe, is a... It's a beefsteak, and that one's a San Marzano. This one is a Brandywine Red, and this one is Red Cherry, and this one is a Super Beefsteak. So I'm gonna go ahead, put these in the ground, and um, and then I'll water them in. And like I said, I gotta make a run to Lowe's to get a few more things. So the wind was blowing a lot, so you can't really hear what I'm saying. So to trellis the tomatoes, what I was planning to do was tie the, the twine loosely around the base of each tomato plant and tie it to the top. I ended up not doing that. I ended up tying the string directly to the, the grid lines, since they're string, and then tossing it over to the other side and tying it down. I didn't want to damage the plant. And the plan is that as the tomato gets taller, what you're going to see is that I'm going to wind the tomato plant around the string, which is what I'm demonstrating with my finger right now. So that's it.
So rather than tying it to the tomato, I decided to tie it to part of the grid, um, which is probably a better thing. I, yeah, I really don't, because tying to the plant can cause problems. So I just looped it over and the top of it, and I'm going to do that for the rest of them. And then with the open beds, I'll be looping it to the uh, second highest level. So that pretty much is how you do it. Um, not too, not too overly difficult. So that's it. So I'll show you guys the video once I finish planting all of the tomatoes.